three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome back to our IPM special series. Today we're gonna to be focusing on transplanting and spraying our plants with plant therapy and Azimax to keep our girls healthy and spider mite free. We'll be showing you guys how to properly transplant those cannabis plants in their new home. And then we'll be going through the process of doing a foliar application with Azimax to eradicate the spider mites. Exciting stuff. That's right. Hope you all are ready to get rid of some bugs because we have a lot of work to do. So let's get started on episode two of our IPM special series. I'm here with my buddy Matt Gates and I wanted to talk a little bit about the problem that I'm having right now. So I had some cuts that were worth saving and worth fighting through, but they did come with some spider, uh, spider mites. So um, I, this is clone from a mother that had spider mites. It's been a little bit of a battle and I'm going to continue that battle with this Azimax. And this is from seed. This is a homegrown seed. This one here is peanut butter breath. So it, for somebody that's trying to get new genetics into their grow, this is the downside of clones, you know, especially with uh, either from a friend or a company, there's always a chance of getting bugs or some type of pathogen into your garden. So seeds, uh, they do have their advantage in that respect. They are more vigorous. Some of these things you can see roots even coming out of the stock here. So uh, we got Matt here to give us some advice on how to deal with these spider mites. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that when you look at these two plants, you can sort of see the signs of spider mites. Anyone who's dealt with spider mites will know that they have this sort of uh, speckled, sort of white dotted appearance, the leaves do, and oftentimes, oh, yeah. yeah, and it can get pretty egregious. It can get pretty, pretty bad. Um, but even before that point, uh, usually the spider mites are on the, the underside of the leaf, but you see the damage on the overside of the leaf yeah once you're familiar with those you can spot them a mile away uh, you know they they do take little bites out of the leaf so you see this little speckling on the chlorophyll there but yeah it's uh, i know a lot of people are of the mind that just if you have spider mites just kill everything and start over new and i don't totally disagree with that but this cut is is worth saving so i'm going to put a little bit of work um because we're in veg here, I'm going to be spraying Azimax and a couple other products, uh, um, plant therapy, Azimax, and those are, I mean, you can go hard in the vegetative state. You don't want to spray those things, uh, especially Azimax, into the flowering stage. So now that I pulled these out of the shed, we're going to transplant. We're, uh, after we get these transplanted, we're going to hit these hard with this pump sprayer. Yeah, that's nice. And it's great because it's a contact kill. And uh, if you get good coverage at this point in the life stage of the plant, it's a lot easier to deal with it anyways. It's just gonna get worse. Yeah, and I, I know the key with this is they have a, a pretty short life cycle. So you have the larval stage, they lay eggs and all that stuff. So you wanna hit it, uh, there's, you wanna go a little bit heavy and you wanna apply every day or every other day and you wanna hit that so you hit them in all stages of their life. So. If you contact kill the first generation and there's eggs that are protected from that uh, um, substance, you're going to get a reinfestation. That's true. It's true. You have to be aggressive and you have to understand the, the pest life cycle, any pest that you're dealing with. And you've obviously done that here. Yeah, this is not good news. I mean, no grower wants to see spider mites on their grow. But when you're talking about saving genetics or maybe getting a, a cut from an outside source, it, it is worth the hassle if you're committed to that strain. So um, half of these are seed grown from homegrown, half of these are cut. So I'm going to, uh, you know, they were grown together. So even though these were side by side, these look almost unaffected. So, uh, but we're gonna treat them the same. We're gonna get them transplanted in here, douse them and continue to hit them for the next uh, three or four days. Sounds like a good plan. Nice, so uh, let's crack these open, get them in the soil and spray them down. All right, so this is the peanut butter breath. You want to kind of knock this loose a little. And what I like to do is just kind of break up some of these little roots and promotes a bit of growth there. And then have this azim or not azimex, mycos. So they have a granulated formula or a powder. I like the powder. You just kind of dust everything real good. Transplant it in here. 
cover it over. And then we might uh, top it and do a stake, keep it upright. And uh, now we'll do this spider mite infested one. All right, let's see how this one looks. These are started in cocoa. And these sprouts were pr planted directly into cocoa. These ones from clones, you can kind of, let me get this loose here. There we go. You can see I, I started them in these Grodan cubes. Same thing, we're gonna break up these roots on the bottom, get a little dusting of that uh, mycos there. And then, there we go. After we get these in, I got this pump sprayer here. I did a heavy dose of this Azimax. Okay, so we're gonna spray these things down. I'll let you do the honors. Uh, normally you would want to mask up, have gloves on. We get gloves here, but uh, I don't really wear a mask anymore. So let's uh, spray these things down. I know that the spider mites like to settle on the undersides of the leaves. So we need to be thorough with these, huh? That's true, that's true. And luckily you're doing this at a time when they're not a huge amount. So you're not really gonna have that problem that you would have as they uh, mount up. And like you said earlier, their population grows really rapidly. So you gotta act quickly. Yeah, like the, these were grown side by side. So these have had it since the mother. And you can see it doesn't look like they have any adult spider mites on it, but it does look like there's some eggs on the other underside. So keeping that regimen up over the next three or four days to make sure you kind of break that life cycle. So um, if you're going to be growing this indoors and you have high intensity lights, it's good to do this on the off hours when the lights are off. Or, I mean, it's great here because it's nice and overcast. We don't have any intense direct light. So uh, outdoor, if you have full sun, bright lights, you maybe want to move them to the shade with a spray down like this. Yeah, so you don't want to flag anyone. You don't want to spray it on something that you don't want to spray. You really want to spray it on the tops and the bottoms of the plant. So like here, like, uh, like Parker has, you know, we have this spray. You also don't want to go too far in. You know, there's no need to do that. The spray has a range and, you know, you can do it kind of lighter and uh, you don't want to drench it too much as well. But just make sure that you get both the tops and the bottoms of the leaves. And if you have to move foliage to do that, some people like to cut uh, their plants when they're more mature. Um, before that they spray so they get better coverage. That's definitely a valid move to make. Yeah, I think defoliating, uh, kind of um, clearing what you can, especially some of those lower infected leaves, kind of clearing if you got any dead foliage or uh, some, some dense clusters of leaves, taking off what you can and then treating the area. So let's see with these. Uh, yeah, I like to get the undersides. I also have a fogger that works well for my indoors. So we're doing this pump sprayer. This thing's, uh, I think 10 bucks from Home Depot. So this is a nice, uh, easy way to apply this stuff. So I'm gonna get out here over the next three or four days and make sure that we drench all these plants. So, you know, it's, it's the downside of getting clones from somebody. You know, sometimes they come with bugs or pathogens, but uh, I definitely want to, want to keep this strain. So. If, if you want to keep your grow sterile, uh, seeds are a better bet. So, I mean, it's uh, either way, you can uh, treat your plants appropriately. So we're gonna get the rest of these plants in the pot, spray everything down and see how this treatment does in the next few days. Well, thanks a lot for coming by, Matt. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how these bugs do and we'll catch you next time. Look forward to it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.